Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Safety and Health webcast, Making Safety Visual, 10 Proven Strategies for Building Safety Culture, sponsored by Marlin. This is Alan Ferguson, Associate Editor at Safety and Health Magazine, and I am moderating today's session. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to start the presentation in a couple of minutes, but first I want to go over some preliminary items. The views of today's speaker and organizations are their own and do not necessarily reflect those of the National Safety Council or Safety and Health Magazine. Any mention of a commercial enterprise, product, or publication does not mean the council or magazine endorses those items. At the end of today's webcast, we will conduct a question and answer session. To ask a question, simply type it in the text box in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, then click the button for Submit Question. Feel free to ask your question any time during the presentation. You don't have to wait for the Q&A to begin. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible, but because of the large number of participants today, we might not get to every question. Any unanswered questions will be forwarded to today's speaker. At the end of the webcast, you'll be asked to complete a brief evaluation survey, and I will let you know more about that after the presentation. This webcast is archived, so you can access it after today's live event. To view this webcast and all of our past webcasts, go to safetyandhealthmagazine.com slash events. Finally, if you need basic troubleshooting information, click the Help button located on your screen. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Our speaker today is Jude Carter, Vice President of Marketing at Marlin, a workplace digital signage company serving thousands of employers in the U.S. and Canada. Jude has developed communications and marketing strategies for Fortune 500 companies and is an expert in workplace digital signage and visual communication. Jude, whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Okay, Alan, thanks very much. And hi, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us to learn more about how you can make safety visual. We have an action-packed agenda today, so I'm just going to jump right in. Here's what we're going to cover. We'll start by making a case for employee engagement and see how that impacts our ability to build a culture of safety. I'm then going to assign you a little bit of homework so that you can clarify your objectives. And then we'll talk about the power of visual communication, how it works and why it works. And then we will be review the 10 strategies that are proven and practical for making safety visual. As Alan said, uh, we're going to allow time for Q&A, and we'll hope that we can get everybody's questions answered. So speaking of questions, we have one short poll question that we would like you to take right now. We're going to give you about 30 seconds. And this is going to help us understand what channels you're using to communicate with your workers. So if you just take a minute and take this poll, and I'll show you the results. Okay, so the results are coming in and very interesting. Tells me that you folks are very busy. You should be able to see the answers yourself um, with the percentages associated with it. So obviously one of the big challenges today is we as managers and communicators have so many channels to touch to get our messages out there. So it looks like the most common thing that you do is meetings, followed by toolbox talks, followed by email. Looks like a few of you are using digital signage or electronic message boards, uh, the standard bulletin boards, um, and a little bit of internet. So thanks for helping me by sharing that information. So I know that the focus for today is about safety, but we can't grab our employees' attention without getting them engaged because in order for them to embrace our messages, they need to be paying attention. So that's the science in and of itself. So we just wanted to start by talking about that a little bit. You know, for a number of years now, the Gallup organization has been studying the state of employee engagement across all industries. And they tell us today that about 34% of employees are engaged. So what does that really mean? Uh, by definition, an engaged employee is one who's fully absorbed by and enthusiastic about their work and so takes positive action to further the organization's reputation and interests. So that sounds really great, and can you imagine what it would be like if a lot more of our employees felt that way? 
Well, with all the talk about employee engagement, it's easy to think it's sort of a lot of fluff and there's not a lot of hard science attached to it. But that's really quite far from the truth. What Gallup has found is those people that they've surveyed, and they've surveyed across all different industries and sizes of companies, they've found that there's a hard dollar and ROI connection to those companies that have positive employee engagement. They experience lower absenteeism, and the number that jumps out at me on this slide is 48% fewer accidents, safety accidents, when employees are more engaged, which makes a lot of sense. They're obviously paying more attention and uh, they're very aware of what they're doing, they're happy about what they're doing, and they feel motivated. Uh, it has an impact on quality with 41% fewer quality defects, higher productivity, and hits the bottom line with higher profitability. So let's just think about that for a minute and apply it to the workplace. Let's say the, the United States Department of Labor states that there's an injury incidence rate of 3.4 cases per 100 employees. So let's say you have 150 employees at your facility, and we apply that injury rate, which gives us five incidents of injured employees. National Safety Council tags the uh, cost per injury at about $53,000. So for those five injured employees, the annual injury cost would be $270,000. However, if you have a workforce that has higher engagement scores, that dollar amount and that exposure can be reduced by as much as 48%. So the annual savings is almost $130,000. As you can see, that, you know, that's significant. So it's not just some vague idea. It actually impacts how we run our business. So having said that, how are we going to engage people? It's very different today versus how it used to be. I wanted to share this picture with you. Uh, Marlin has been around for over 100 years, and we started out at Marlin Firearms, where uh, the family owned a fire, uh, the rifle factory. You've probably heard of Marlin Firearms. And we were having some issues with communicating safety to the employees. So we got this idea that if we put uh, postings on the wall, not just safety postings, but interesting pictures that had to do with maybe with the World Series or politics or new inventions, that the employees would be intrigued enough to look at those pictures, and by osmosis, they would see the safety posters. So this is an actual shot of what we used to call the news center, and you can see how riveted this audience is. I laugh when I look at it sometimes because they do not have cell phones in their back pockets buzzing and beeping and they didn't have a lot of competition for their attention, so the novelty factor worked. Fast forward to today, and it's a lot more like this. We're all addicted to our devices, and we're highly distracted, and just trying to juggle it all. So this may seem even more challenging for you, but that's why we're here today, to help you cut through the clutter and figure out exactly how we're going to do this. So I promised you that I would ask you to do some homework. I know sometimes when we sign up for a webinar, we imagine sitting at our desk and eating our giant turkey sandwich and just sort of sitting back. But I'd like to challenge you to think about a few things here. My goal is that when this session is over, you have some actual take-home value that you can apply when you get back to your office or get back to work. Um, so there's three things that we're going to go into here. I want you to start to reflect on who you're trying to reach, what they need to know, and how you are reaching them. So let's start with your audience. I know that you represent a wide variety of industries, and you know your industry better than anyone else. So think of your workforce, those that you need to communicate safety messages to. What is the story with them? Are they shift workers? Are they contract employees that you only see for a portion of the year? Maybe some of them are in offices. How about drivers or technicians? Maybe you have warehouse employees. And then I'd like you to think about where they work because that's going to impact how you communicate with them and what methods are going to work best. Do they have access to computers? Can they use their phones? Um, where are they located? Are they maybe working in a temporary trailer or they're on the road? or they might even be on oil rigs. So, uh, you know, it's, it varies quite widely. So you need to be thinking about that because that's one of the factors. Next, I'd like you to give some consideration to the demographics of your audience. 
Think about the age. You know, today we have four generations of workers in the workforce, and they like to be communicated to differently. Do you have language challenges? That's a factor also. And you might consider educational level in terms of the type of uh, methods you would choose to communicate safety. By answering these questions and thinking about it, you start to set the table to figure out the most effective way to reach everybody. So while this gives us a snapshot of uh, what they do, you need to consider who they are. Because let's face it, we come to work every day, and we've got a lot of other things on our mind. Maybe we're bored. Maybe we're really just exhausted and thinking about retirement. Probably a lot of us can relate to this. We're totally stressed out and distracted, and maybe we're just burned out. All of these things affect our ability to reach people. So we need to think of it holistically. And then we need to understand in a very clear way what do they need to know. So you know your business better than anyone. This is a list, of course, of the OSHA top 10 safety concerns. And you have ones that are unique to your industry as well as your facility. And you know what your regulatory environment is, whether it's OSHA or MSHA, or maybe your company is working hard to attain BPP status. So you've got a whole laundry list of things that need to be communicated. These are some of the essentials that that form the foundation of a good safety communication program. And then we get into the channels. So we know a little bit about our audience because of the poll, but lots of you are using email. We all know that everybody gets too much email and nobody's reading it. Digital signage is becoming widely adopted as the best way to communicate visually. And I know it's a big step for some people to go from print to digital, but that's one of the channels. Bulletin boards, we've all seen them, and unfortunately, too many of them look like this picture here, but I think we can all relate. Intranet, um, what we're hearing from everybody that we talk to is lots of people have them, but they struggle with getting people to go to the intranet to get all that valuable information. And certainly, you've told me that you rely heavily on meetings and toolbox talks. You know, I go around the country speaking to groups like yourselves, often at conferences, and I love to hear innovative ways of how people communicate, including things like signs in the bathroom stalls. Or one of my favorites was people that were putting signs on the floor, the surface of the floor, because they couldn't get people to look up from their cell phones. So they figured they'll put the signs on the floor. At any rate, what you need to remember is that you need to use a combination of all these channels. There isn't really a silver bullet. It's really about a mix. So with all that in mind, you may be feeling perhaps a little overwhelmed, but I've got some great news for you, and that is that you have a very powerful secret weapon. That weapon, of course, is visual communication. It's a really effective way to inspire and teach and motivate. And today, if you just look around and look at how you're living your life, it's overtaken how we communicate, whether it's YouTube or Pinterest or Instagram or just videos everywhere. It's become a way of life, and it's become a way of people expecting it from all aspects of their life, whether it's their personal life or their work life. So consider this. What do you think is more effective? Take a look at this sign. Okay, slippery. Or this. I look at that, and wow, I immediately get it. It's slippery. Maybe it's icy. Maybe there's an oil slick. I don't need to think, and the reason why is that visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than text. So think about that and the impact that you can have by adding visuals. And also think about it in terms of language challenges. You don't need to be able to read English or whatever language you're using because you can all get it from the graphic. So consider this. You've told me that uh, you rely heavily on meetings. Well, no matter how uh, dynamic you are as a speaker or entertaining or how scary you are as a boss, the fact is people are going to forget, are only going to um, remember 10% of what they hear, 25% of what they read. However, it bumps up to 80% with what they see and do which, again, speaks to why it's so popular with visual communication. So think about how this has impacted corporate training. You know, you used to do your safety training sitting in a classroom, and everybody would take notes, and they'd see some really boring slides and no visuals. And now it's moved to gamification, 
and on demand and look at how the students are being taught in school everything is has become uh, more of an interactive lively method uh, there's an interesting article today in the Wall Street Journal about how companies are really loving uh, employees that have video game experience because they are great at problem solving and online collaboration, and that's all about visual communication. So as safety professionals, one of the challenges that you have is you need to get people to listen, then they've got to understand what you're saying, they've got to remember it, and then they have to put it to practice. So this is kind of an interesting um, state uh, an interesting analysis here. So it's saying, based on the research into the picture superiority effect, when we read text alone, we're likely to remember only 10% within three days versus adding visuals, it brings us to 65% retention. So all of this builds a case for telling us that we really need to add visuals to have an effective safety communication program. What we're going to do now is jump into our 10 strategies of how you can make that happen in your workplace. Starting with number one, know your takeaway. So in other words, start with the end in mind. Companies everywhere are drowning in data and are challenged with how to share it with their employees. You may have noticed earlier I showed you that bulletin board with all those spreadsheets. Let's face it, nobody loves spreadsheets, and if you hang them on the wall, no matter how important they are, chances are nobody's going to really look at them. However, if you take some action and point out to the passerby just what you want them to focus on and interpret the important point for them, it's going to make a huge difference. They're going to notice, hey, somebody wrote something important on top of that boring spreadsheet. I'm going to go look at it. But start to imagine what would happen if this is on your bulletin board and next to it you placed an interesting picture about something totally unrelated that would grab somebody's attention. So you need to use a little bit of psychology. Uh, the more that you can use simple, colorful graphs with KPIs that are easy for people to interpret, the better off you'll be. As safety professionals, you're constantly dealing with compliance issues, and often those standards come in a very chewy format. There's a lot of talk about respirable silica and the new standards that have been released, and typically that information is available in websites and long documents, which is great for management, but when it comes to boiling down the essence of what's important, you need to think about translating it into something much simpler and highly visual so that employees are going to know what action they need to take. So basically, this translation that I'm showing you communicates the outcome of what we want for the employees. We want them to wear the respirator and wear the correct one. So by sticking a simple green check in the box, it's that universal mark that that's go, that's good, that's the right one. So regardless of any language, the takeaway is simple. And this is what I mean about understanding back on reflecting on your audience is, sure, the website and the long documents are going to work for management, for, but for people who are on the line or maybe working in a mine, uh, this is really um, a much better way to get their attention. I was recently visiting a gravel quarry a customer of ours and they were struggling with how to reach their employees and particularly reinforce safety communication because they were in the quarry most of the time and they'd come in and take a break and they really wanted some signs that were visual that were going to capture their attention to reinforce safety such as this. You're all familiar with the OSHA quick cards. Uh, these are great, and it's a much boiled down version, but it's still a lot to read. So again, think about taking this one on forklift safety and turning it into a simple visual. So you want the picture to do the work for you. Think image, headline, and subhead. What do we want to do? We want people to think. We want them within this picture, they can quickly see that there's an issue where there's spillage in the surface and maybe there's something blocking the aisle. If a surface looks sketchy, stop and assess. So you've suddenly made it easier for me. I don't have to sit and read the OSHA quick card, which, by the way, it shows you how little patience we have because we don't even want to read the bulleted list. We want to just go right to the visual. 
And then we get the uh, face reports from NIOSH, again, long articles with an image about accidents that point out really critical things that you want to reinforce to your employees. But is anybody going to read this? No, they're not. If it's on a bulletin board or if you're passing it out at a meeting or you're emailing it, let's face it, they're not going to. So if you can distill the essence of that incident report and show this or something like this, you get the point across very quickly. Another thing you can do is use humor to grab people's attention. I know we all love to go out on YouTube and there's plenty of OSHA fails with footage for video, but obviously you'd need a place to play that. And those of you that are using digital signage have a great benefit of being able to show video. So that's number one, know your um, end result. Number two, access the power of repetition. What I hear over and over again from safety professionals is that you struggle with the idea that you've got to reinforce the same list of things over and over again, and how do you make it interesting? So there's two aspects to repetition. The first is how you do mix it up to make it interesting, and the good news is that visuals give you endless opportunities to mix up that message. So when you think of safe lifting, you can try a humorous approach of a safety don't. You can try something that's more instructional to get people to think before they lift and move something. Or you can highlight what we're trying to avoid, which is stress injuries. Again, pointing out unsafe examples or use an instructional approach. Everybody loves graphic novels these days, especially your younger workers, so you might take that approach or cartoons. So while the subject is serious, the imagery doesn't have to be. Again, the goal is to grab somebody's attention so that they'll read the message. And the secondary goal is to make sure that your message is very digestible. So that helps us understand how we can mix it up to speak about a single topic in a way that is fresh every time. But the other aspect of repetition has to do with how many times you need to get a message in front of an employee so that it will stick. So there's, um, for years now, the ad industry has been the most effective at influencing our behavior and getting us to do things. And they've established something called repeated visual exposure. And what that is, is we need to be exposed to messages and visuals together four or five times before it sinks in and before we're um, inclined to make a change, buy a particular product, select a particular brand. So how this relates to you is, let's say you're using digital signage and you want, you're running a PowerPoint on that screen and you want to reinforce this message about safe lifting. You're going to let it run for a month? No, because if you do that, nobody's going to look at it. You're going to let it run once? Of course not. You need to run it five times. And, how does, and then people will get it, they'll notice it, it's new enough, they get the message. How about on a bulletin board? Same thing, you've got to think about uh, switching that up. So if this is your message and you've made it visual and it's on the board next to those spreadsheets, make sure that you switch it up every week. So that's repetition. Our third tip is learn to promote like a pro. While you may be in the field of safety, the fact is when it comes to visual communication, you need to start thinking like a marketer. So I'll bet that you have at least one in-house safety initiative going on in your company. And my question to you is, do people really know about it? Do they know how to get involved? What are the rules of engagement? And how can they win something or be rewarded or recognized? Well, the good news is it's never too late to relaunch it. You need to think about handling it like a campaign and communicate it visually across all of your channels. So get some excitement going in your toolbox talk or your stand-up meetings by talking about your Safety for Life program or Safety All-Stars or Nobody Gets Hurt. Make sure you put some postings on the bulletin board. If you have digital signage, it's a great place to make sure that you have an announcement for it in your play rotation. But that's just the beginning of it. You want to get people involved and you want to also show the results of it, of what's happening, and communicate that ongoingly over time so everybody can get in on it. 
all too often I've seen people have a great idea for a program, but it sort of fizzles out. So basically what you're doing is you're trying to keep it alive by, by visual reinforcement. Our fourth strategy is to create a feedback loop. Social media has forever changed the way we operate in the world and the way we express ourselves. So suddenly, everybody has a voice. Whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Yelp, we can let the world know what we think and what we like and especially what we don't like, and we can share it. And it's very exciting to think that we have that big voice on anything we want to talk about. And yet in the workplace, there's, there are still a lot of walls up, and there isn't that open communication. And I don't think you'd be on this webinar today if you weren't interested in building that safety culture. So a big part of building any culture is transparency and open communication. So we're not talking about that tired suggestion box that's off in a dusty corner. We're talking about creating some excitement around eliciting feedback from people. So maybe you still use a physical box, but let's create an exciting poster, and you're going to name whatever it is you want to solicit information on. So do you want to know something very general, like how can we make our workplace safer? And you want to set a time by which you want those answers so that you can respond, look at the answers, and then talk about how you're going to make changes based on that feedback. Because one of the things that has always been a problem with the old style of, say, suggestion boxes, people would put the suggestions in and nothing would happen. And they felt free to maybe complain and management would just see this list of complaints. But by framing it with a visual and letting people know specifically what you want their feedback on and then communicating back to them about the results, and posting pictures perhaps of the people that put the greatest suggestions in and showing the impact that their suggestions had on the company. All of this goes a long way in letting people feel like they have a hand in how the business is being run. If you are running digital signage, you can create like an e-suggestion box using QR codes that people can scan with their phone or make it easy for people to communicate back and give their ideas. Maybe you want to go through email, let them reach you by text. So think about your workforce and what you think they'd be most likely to want and what are they going to respond to because it's all about participation. Our fifth strategy is to take a balanced approach. So we know that safety is top of mind for you, but let's face it, that's not the case for everybody. If you think you can deliver a steady diet of compliance and safety tips all day long, you've got another thing coming. You really need to mix it up, make it a little more interesting and compelling for people to want to consider it and make it fun for them to learn something. You need to do that by considering adding some lighter approaches. So here at Marlin, we have developed a formula. I mentioned we've been at this for over 100 years, um, being in the business of visual communication in the workplace, and particularly in shift environments where it's difficult to reach people. And we've learned over time that the secret to success is balancing the type of messages that you display. This is the formula that we have proven to be most successful. So 35% of your messaging should be around compliance. So that's the awareness that people have of rules and regulations. Another 35% should be more around performance, which is the behavior of how we want people to comply to those rules. Now, you may find that that's, that's all 100% of what you've been doing, and that's where you might be mistaken, because unless you mix it up, with these bottom two categories, which are morale and culture, you're not going to get the attention of your employees and you're not going to sustain them and keep them engaged. So the morale is more about recognition and the culture might be more about what you're doing with health and wellness and what kinds of interesting things are going on in your company that make it a great place to work. So it's all of that in combination that works effectively. When we've presented this formula in live workshops, we found we sort of could see the light bulb go out with uh, the audience because they realized that they were really out of balance and they needed to mix it up a little bit. So you may find that uh, that's the case with you as well. 
Our next strategy is about employee recognition. It's a great way to reinforce behavior, and it's a great way for you to reinforce your objectives specific to safety. Chances are your company has a recognition program, more of a generic employee of the month, but what we'd encourage you to do is consider that homework that you were doing earlier and think about what is it that you're really trying to accomplish, what are your biggest challenges, and how can you recognize employees for helping you achieve those goals. For example, we have an aging workforce and a lot of people are getting ready to retire and they can walk out the door with a lot of knowledge. We want to make sure that knowledge is shared and we see many companies have exciting programs with uh, the sharing of that information with an older worker, with a younger worker. And you can acknowledge that with their picture and uh, a poster of them or a PowerPoint or a um, piece of content on digital signage to recognize that. Similarly, you might be recognizing people for certifications and training that support what you're trying to accomplish. So you're keeping it visual, you're making it personal, and you're aligning it with your objectives. Our seventh strategy is to speak to the whole person. So as workers, we come to work every day, and yet we have a whole life outside of work. We're not just that person on the second shift. And if you really want to get my attention, sometimes we got to be thinking about things other than work. So for example, maybe I have an older parent who is experiencing early stage dementia and that's really distracting me, it's worrying me, and because of that I may be doing some things at work that are causing problems. There may be, you know, I'm distracted, I'm not paying attention to uh, where I'm walking, I might not be using my PPE properly, and yet and the reason is that I'm distracted and thinking about my father. But if you help me understand maybe how I could handle that stress or learn more about that problem, that's going to let me know that you care about me as a person as well as me as an employee. And if you have visual communication around a subject like this, you're grabbing my attention and maybe next to it there's a similar posting about something that has to do with, say, PPE. Or let's uh, take a look at everyone with their families. You know, the number one reason why everybody wants to stay safe is so that they can be with their families and their children in particular. I've seen some really cool programs where companies get kids involved in creating um, pictures around safety or health, and they create a calendar of it. So, again, you're marrying the personal with your safety goals. Or celebrating holidays or we do something in our company called Ethnic Palooza, which is a way that we share our cultural heritage. But it's, it's a way to create more of a cohesion with your employees and make it a great place to work all the way around. Um, certainly on the health and wellness side, there's a lot of wonderful content to be had that's very visual, that reminds people of healthy habits. And we all know this impacts our performance at work and the quality of our lives. So imagine if you had a picture like this, these uh, women look like they're having way too much fun, uh, and posted this near those spreadsheets, you might get a little more attention where people are paying, to bo paying attention to both things. So it's all about recognizing the whole person. Our eighth strategy is don't go it alone. I know that I've been showing you a lot of new things and you may be feeling a little overwhelmed, but the fact is it really isn't all on you. No matter how big your company is, there's got to be other people who are subject matter experts that can help you with some content that you can translate into easy messages. The great news is that your younger employees love to take pictures and love to get involved and will be you know, glad to take part. And everybody's got a camera in their pocket, whether it's for video footage or selfies or safety don'ts. A great way to go about this is to create a library. Get some other people involved. Create a library of images that are common to what you think you would need to help illustrate those messages that are most important to you. The great news is, you know, we no longer need really sophisticated cameras or video equipment. You can just do it all with your phone. So take full advantage of that. And you'd be surprised. Uh, people are often flattered to be asked to be involved, particularly if it's something creative.
you may be thinking about money, uh, thinking about how busy you are and how are you ever going to you know, get all these images. Well, certainly taking pictures with your cell phone is free, basically. But um, here's a list of a number of resources, and there are so many more, whether it's our professional associations, like our sponsors, National Safety Council, or NIOSH, or MSHA, OSHA, all of those sites have terrific information. Yes, you may need to take more densely written content and use some of the techniques we've talked about today to make them more visual. Over on the left, you'll see a list of free websites where you can get content all day long, and it's just limited by your imagination. And on top of that, so many websites, including ours, utilize, have a wide variety of ebooks and things like that that are highly visual that you can draw from and then redeploy, reconstitute for your workforce. Infographics are very popular. They're a great way for people to digest complex information with simple images. And there are plenty of them available online for you. So it's more a matter of understanding, again, that hit list of those things that you need to communicate. And then start looking through the lens of visual communication and say, how can I make this topic more visual? What are the five ways that I can talk about forklifts and show this so that people are going to want to pay attention? Our last strategy in many ways is the most important because it's about making a commitment. At first, what you're doing is making a commitment to communicating, which is a part of your daily job. I understand that. But what we're asking you to do here is to make a commitment to making that communication visual. And the best way to do that is to agree to have a regular meeting on this subject. Now, it's not going to be a meeting with just you because you've already learned that you're going to be tying in some other people, whether it's the subject matter experts or whether it's your uh, team of people that are willing to help take pictures whoever you want to put on the team, it's great if you create a calendar. Think of it as an editorial calendar. And you can take your list of all the issues that you want to cover and map them out over the month and figure out how often they need to be communicated and to whom and which of the channels you're going to be using. And then you can turn to the people on your team, say it's your subject matter experts, and find out, okay, how often are they going to be able to contribute something? Is it once a week? And in what format will it be? Will, is it going to be in a PowerPoint? Is it going to be something that I can make into a poster? Is it going to be an email? What is it? Is it going to be a, um, something, a video that I could put on my digital signage? So by mapping it out, you can understand the coverage that you have. And then you can also think about what we talked about with balancing to understand are you covering compliance, are you covering performance, culture, and morale. And you're going to have a much better feeling about your efforts and how you're reaching your people. So just to take a quick run through the 10 strategies, know your takeaway. That's about boiling down your message in its simplest form and letting the images work for you. Think headline and subhead and an image that people are really going to want to look at. Use the power of repetition. Yes, you're communicating the same things often, but use visuals to mix it up. And remember, particularly if you are using digital signage, you want to show something four or five times so that people retain it. If you have inside uh, in-house initiatives, think about promoting them like a true marketer, where you make it visual and let everybody know how they can get involved and who, what are the results. Create a feedback loop. Make it easy to get your employees' opinions and let them know what happens when they give them. Show them the results and acknowledge them. Give them credit. Let them feel great about it. Take a balanced approach. We showed you our formula. We hope you'll take it to heart. We know it works. Uh, recognize your employees. Everybody likes to know that they're appreciated and do it in such a way that it supports your objectives. Speak to the whole person. Don't forget that we're still people even though on the first shift or from 9 to 5, we're workers. Uh, we want to be treated like human beings. Don't go it alone. It's not all on your shoulders. 
assemble some people to create a team, and make sure that you utilize all the free resources that are available to you the online and elsewhere. And most importantly, make a commitment to it. Make a commitment to visual communication and having those meetings and having that calendar. So that's it. So with that, I'd love to hear what kind of questions you have. So Alan, what do we have? Thank you, Jude, uh, for your insightful and engaging presentation. Uh, before we start the q and I want to remind everyone of the evaluation survey we're asking you to complete. Uh, the survey should be appearing on your screen now. Your input is important because it will help us improve our future webcast. If you don't see the evaluation survey on your screen, please turn off your pop-up blocker. You may also access the survey by clicking the survey button near the lower right part of your screen. Okay, now let's get to some questions. It says, we are a public municipal municipality, not under OSHA. Uh, our employees who are most exposed to dangerous hazards are field employees out all day without email or any communication device. Safety communication is, relay is relayed from risk management to the supervisors slash managers, and there's a potential of it being watered down. Without a safety person going out to give the information, um, do you have any suggestions? Hmm. Um, is there a way that any kind of uh, – so when they're on site, there is somebody, there's a for, some type of manager with them, correct, or are they alone, completely alone? I don't think it says. It says – it's a, it's a long question, so. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it um, says without a safety person going out to give the information, so. And this is the uh, in terms of on site – Go ahead. Um, okay. In terms of on-site, what we're finding with field employees is companies are really trying to get some kind of mobile communication going um, with mobile devices, but that doesn't sound like, uh, you know, do they have, are they using, um, they must have some types of phones, right? Emails out, but, um, you know, that's what we're seeing. Is a mobile it says without an email or any communication device, so I don't know that, <laughs> you know, phones are in there. Um I would be yeah, normally I would assume a phone would be involved, yeah. but mm -hmm. this is saying without a communication device. Yeah, I mean, I you know I think in that case it it can't happen on site. It's got to happen whenever they are you know whether they're at home or you know wherever they're someplace where they can get information and review it. Whether it's simple handouts that are laminated that reinforce visually the you know safety procedures, something like that. It is challenging when they're really way out there. Uh, our next question. I'm in the marketing department. It seems like more often than not we have really great photos, but our safety department deems the image unsafe. Do you have strategies to help curb the number of these unsafe images? Well, I I would say that um, when you talk about team, um, if, if marketing is driving it, it would be very helpful to have somebody on your team that's uh, assembling these messages that is on the safety side so that they can vet what, what's going to happen. You know, we had talked about the OSHA fails, and usually they're shown as an example of a safety don't. So you've got to be very clear on how you're going to message the correction of what that image is. So I think you need an advisory situation where there's somebody there in, in your organization who is your highest, your OSHA certified person who, you know, can vet that. Our next question, where would one go for digital communication that would be economical? I know that today's staff are so into the digital world, and I think this would be sure. a great idea for flashing up um, safety issues, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Well, of course you can talk to us. We would love to talk to you. So um, digital signage is, uh, is very popular, and I, you know, it's all over the place at all different price points. Uh, what's important to consider is that um, a lot of the digital signage is is used for another purpose. It's used for advertising and marketing. Uh, what you'd be looking for is digital signage that's specific to communicating with employees. Uh, that happens to be something that we specialize in. We'd love to talk to you about it. Um, but otherwise, short of that, you can go online and um, do a little looking. We publish an ebook that um, we can make available to you on the eight critical questions to ask if considering digital signage that you might find helpful to uh, become more informed on. 
actually a lot of the stuff we talked about here today helps prepare you for what you'd want to use your digital signage for. Our next question, how do you get upper management engaged to, um, I guess, talking about safety and sending the, the right safety messages? That's a great question, and I hear this over and over again from people. So um, one, of, one of the things that we've seen work really effectively is if you have an in-house program, like we talked about, and you're promoting it, is to get your highest level person involved to help endorse that program because it is, in fact, supporting your objectives. So um, I think it's really all about tying in your safety objectives to what the company's objectives are, right? So I think there needs to be that, that marriage there, and um, it's certainly helpful to have the senior most level person available, whether you're recognizing uh, employees for doing things right uh, or having any kind of awards thing, that they're present there so that it's not done in a vacuum. And uh, um, one other thing, if you have digital signage, it's a terrific way to – get your CEO or your general manager, whoever the top person is, um, talking on the topic and have a video clip of them playing um, on your screen and supporting your efforts in safety. So when when recognizing employees, and speaking of which, uh, how, do you, how do you make that timely? What is your advice for that? Well, it, lots of times people will have a something of the month, you know, employee of the month or safety star of the month. And what we've seen work effectively is sometimes people do like a hall of fame, like in a hallway you might have framed photos for that year where you have the, those 12, you know, at the end of the year you'll have the 12 people up there um, for the course of the year if you're doing it monthly. That's, the, you know, the most frequent. Other thing, you know, it really kind of depends on what it is. You know, we talked about um, – if it's a big campaign like that, like Safety Star, that you know that may be a monthly thing, but you might be running shorter things where you're recognizing people for the great suggestions that we talk about. So I, you know, I think people start to lose interest sometimes, and it's good to put a tight time frame around something. So the combination of having an ongoing program, say for the course of the year, where there's some visual evidence of the winners, and by the way, if you do, say you do use posters, the nice thing is you can give people those pictures or those posters to take home. Um, but in terms of the recognition of the shorter-term campaigns, um, you could do those you know, more frequently and mix it up. Our next question, I struggle in getting temporary employees engaged since, you know, obviously they don't have as much uh, buy-in. What are your recommendations on getting uh, that group of people uh, more engaged? Um, I've often heard this, particularly with uh, contract workers. So the more you can create an environment that is visual, they're still human beings, they're coming to work, and you can still grab their attention the more clever you are. So it's really, uh, again, kind of putting on your advertiser's hat because, you know, they may not want to read those long manuals or those, you know, OSHA quick tips, but you could probably grab their attention just by walking by, by making things compelling and more visual. So, um, you know, they may be, you don't, they're not there for the long term, but that doesn't mean you can't capture their attention. Obviously, digital science can be kind of a, a new format. So uh, what suggestions do you have to combat the we've always done it this way mentality? Uh, this person says, we are a manufacturing company but have mm -hmm. few injuries. Yeah. And, they, and they say, yay, obviously. Yeah, mm -hmm. But, you know, I want to keep things fresh and away from complacency. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sorry, the question is, why should we consider it? Or what's, what suggestions do you have to uh, combat the the we've always done it this way mentality and, and combating complacency? Um, well, I would say that, um, that one, of, you know, one of the aspects that everybody's talking about is the workforce has changed so dramatically. So you can't kind of keep doing things the same way. And you're trying to grab the attention of a very different worker, particularly with all the, the large um, – number of millennials that are coming into the workforce. So uh, we need to be thinking of new ways to communicate to them because 
the world has changed. And certainly um, the, the younger workers are expecting everything to be in video and visual. And, you know, they're excited about that. And they're looking for that when they look for jobs. I mean, we know what the job market's like right now. And so that's you know, about creating a culture that's going to be attractive to, to um, new employees and younger employees. And, and so in, in this case, like with moving on from print to digital is a huge um, – a huge aspect of that. But the other thing is, you know, you just think about shift. Um, digital signage solves a huge problem around shift workers because you can pre-schedule messages to be targeted to those workers on those shifts. You can't do that with a bulletin board. And then also, when you've got things like days without accidents, as you want to keep in front of people readily, you can use a widget to do that automatically, an auto counter that's in the, um, on the digital signage screen, and rather than running out and changing that whiteboard. So, you know, maybe that's how you always did things, but think there, you know, there's, there are always better things, better ways to do things, and the world is changing. What are some of the best strategies where you have a, a bunch of remote sites across the country and you really kind of have a spread out footprint with, you know, individual facilities or perhaps teams? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, and we see this all the time. Again, talk about the way we've always done things. So one of the main reasons why a lot of companies do go digital is just that. They need to get a consistent message to multiple locations to different kinds of workers, and yet they also want local communication to happen, and digital signage will let you do both of those things. So let's let's say that you have a headquarters and you have um, four regional offices that include um, uh, factories and warehouses, and you need to communicate some messages that are the same to all of those employees, and yet you need unique messaging going on locally. Digital signage is an ideal platform for making that happen. Otherwise, you're kind of playing the game of telephone where you are hoping, you know, you're sending out emails, you hope that people get them, you're communicating things uh, verbally and hoping that they get passed down at those different locations. But as you know, it gets reinterpreted and you can't control the message. Our next question, do you have any success stories of companies that have embraced digital signage and kind of seen a positive change, you know, across um, a couple of years or even a few years? Yes, we have quite a few. Um, the best thing would be to take a look at our website and look at our case studies uh, when you have a little time. Um, and they, you know, we work across nine different industries, but what we see is that um, – People now that we talk to are so anxious to get beyond bulletin boards because they realize that they want to do things quickly and easily. They can save a tremendous amount of time by having digital signage because in a few clicks they can put up a fresh message and they don't have to sync it all up themselves. They don't have to type it out. They can use some of the great templates and uh, tools that we have to, to save time and easily put up any kind of a file, whether it's a PowerPoint or a video or any kinds of images or data or charts. Uh, but what, you know, so are, they really love this, the time savings. They like what I mentioned earlier, the consistency of message, the idea that they can control a message whether they're physically there or not. You know, we talk about the work around the third shift often referred to as the lost worker. Um, upper management doesn't see this person ever, and yet you can be assured that you get the same message on that third shift that you had scheduled in um, that people did on, on the first shift. And um, certainly people have seen reductions in accidents and greater safety awareness and better employee communication uh, scores. Companies that do um, employee surveys, they often, those that have poor scores will often get serious and say, we need to improve communication, let's get digital signage. So then they, they develop a content strategy for how they use those signs so that it'll serve their objective. So if their objective is to improve safety, they're going to make sure that the content that they display is aligned a lot toward what we talked about today, even though we didn't have a huge amount of time. That's where we were headed. So um, it gives you a great platform to make your messages more dynamic and just do it so much easier. You can save paper, save time, save staff. Our next question, you mentioned language barriers. What is the best strategy to get uh, management to understand this issue? 
Well, that very much depends on um, the culture where you are, because what we we found it both ways, uh, where people management will really want to show things in translation because they have a homogeneous group of people that speak un, un, that are non-English speaking, but it's you know say it's, it's Spanish, then they'll want to be putting up uh, messages in Spanish. Or it could backfire where they have a multitude of cultures represented and different languages, and they do not want to favor one over the other, so they will keep it in English. So being in the digital signage business, um, we've often had requests for Spanish, and we, uh, we provide content uh, with our digital signage that's, that covers your industry issues and heavily in the safety area. So we actually have a Spanish edition that we make available uh, for people, so it really is. It depends on the culture of how your company is run, about how you're going to address that. But by using visual communication and getting the message across without a lot of words, you can overcome some of the language issues without having to worry about translation. Third, next question: When you say digital signage, how is this signage delivered? Uh, you mentioned whiteboard. What is the um, what is the best place? So the, what are the best places um, in an organization to deliver it? Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you mean where do you want to put it, or what are the components of it? Yeah, how is, um, it? what is the delivery method? I mean, where, for, where would you, are you talking about where would you place it, or what are the components? So what are the components, I believe. Oh, okay. Sure. So it's very kind simple. Of, and it's a also, screen. Yeah. So it's a screen and a media player, and the software is cloud-based. So it's um, software as a service. So what happens is that you would log into a website, and that would be your content management system. And that's where you would upload all of your content. You'd have a little media player. It could be as small as a piece of bread, and it would be tucked up you know, behind the screen itself. And um, you, know, you could be anywhere with an Internet connection, using that interface, that software, to input your, you know, upload your content, and it would be playing on the screens that are maybe in Des Moines and you're in Connecticut. So um, that's basically what's involved. So from a hardware point of view, it's, it's minimal what you would need. And typically there's a there no license or a subscription that would be associated with the software. So our next question, um, is there a way to make digital signage more engaging? Uh, we have a lot of information. The person asking the question says we have it, and we put a lot of information, such as the safety committee meeting dates, and and mm -hmm. said people don't generally see it. Is it a matter of location? Is it a matter of, like I said, engaging content? All right. Uh, it's it's a couple things. Uh, it definitely has to do with the quality of what you're putting up there and how visual it is. Because if you think you can put up PDFs and you know, like we talked about spreadsheets, nobody is going to read that stuff. It's a visual medium. So the more you can mix it, and I realize you know you live in the real world, so you're going to have to mix it up. So one of the best tricks is to have every other piece be something that is truly engaging and maybe humorous to get them to look at that, and then immediately in the rotation they'll see what you have next to it that may be more serious or require a little more reading. Um, but also you need to factor in where you have them located. Is there um, a reason for people to hang out there, and that's kind of what you want. So um, more, most often they're in break rooms. Sometimes they're at the time clock, but you know you don't want to put it in your lobby if it's for your employees. It, that just doesn't make any sense, right? You want to be where they're going to congregate because you want them talking and noticing something that's on the screen. Like one of the things that we do is we have a news, weather, and sports feed that comes standard within our screen that's in the upper right-hand corner, and people are always looking at the weather, right? And speaking of that, with digital signage, one of the best ways to get people to look at the screens is to run the Doppler weather through there. And so much of your industry is based on weather, whether it's getting your workers to and from work or letting them do their work on the road, weather is a component. So something like that's evergreen, and it's dynamic to watch that Doppler weather map. Um, so And employ some of the things we talked about today. I guess we're out of time. Yes, uh, thank you, everyone. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to everyone's questions, but all of today's unanswered questions will be forwarded to our speaker. Once again, I hope you take the time to fill out the evaluation survey on your screen to give us your feedback. 
That ends today's Safety and Health Magazine webcast. I'd like to thank Jude Carter, everyone at Marlin, and, of course, all of our listeners. Have a safe day. Thanks, everyone.